Greetings gardeners. Today I'd like to talk about one of the underrated members of the cabbage family. Um, the cabbage family in general um, is not the most exciting group of vegetables in the garden. Uh, kale is having kind of a, a fad and an upsurge and so we're eating a little more kale. People seem to get excited about that today. Um, you know, the, the cabbage is a standard. Uh, here in Hawaii, cabbage is found in almost everything. The fried chicken, they put it on top, cabbage, whatever. Cabbage is a very, very common vegetable. All the green papaya salads here are part cabbage and so on. So, you know, the cabbage is important. Broccoli, of course, uh, is an important food in the United States today, uh, although it wasn't uh, back as early as uh, 1959, I believe, was the first commercial crop introduced into the United States. Prior to that, it was an Italian vegetable, and it wasn't eaten much by Americans. As a boy, I did not eat broccoli. I like it. Uh, uh, so we know broccoli is good for us, lots of antioxidants, the uh, cruciferins are good because they'll help reduce the potential of cancer in the system and whatnot. You know, we all know these are good vegetables, but by and large, they're pretty boring, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's a cabbage, right? Yeah, real exciting. Um, most of the time I talk about exotic dragon fruits and all this stuff. So, uh, you know, cabbage is not exactly the hottest topic in my uh, video site here. But one of the vegetables that's in the cabbage family that I just don't see too much interest in, and I think it's a great one, and that's the kohlrabi. The kohlrabi is uh, actually a cabbage that does not form a head. And instead of heading, it, it enlarges the stem. And so the flavor is similar to cabbage. The leaves on kohlrabi are edible, just like cabbage leaves and so on. So it has the nutrition of kale in the leaves. All right, it's a very strong, vital vegetable. It's also really, really easy to grow. And here in Mountain View, Hawaii, I'm finding that the coal crops really are king in this environment. Uh, we have generally cool and moist conditions here that these crops thrive under, which is a real boon. Um, also, they're relatively resistant to a lot of the problems we have. Uh, they don't really get fungus diseases or bacterial diseases very much. They're quite resistant to that sort of thing, which are common here in the tropics. Um, the nematodes don't seem to like them very much. I see a little damage on the plants, but not too much in general. They're quite resistant to the nematode problem here. It will devastate your tomatoes, for instance. And so, in fact, some members of the cabbage family actually drive nematodes out of the soil. Uh, certain mustards are good this way. H Hawaii, at this elevation, which is around 1,600 feet, uh, we actually do kind of get seasons. Uh, right now, we are in the winter time here. It's cooler. Temperatures drop into the mid-50s, uh, commonly at night, at least into the lower 60s, usually, if there's cloud cover. And uh, the daytime temperatures seldom rise above 80, and that range right in, say, between 55 and 80 degrees, well, it is just so perfect in the wintertime for raising these coal crops here. Um, we don't have too many cabbage worms and so on, so it's really a blessing. Now, let's take a look at some of this stuff here. Right over here, we have a, a row of cabbages that I put in a while ago. They're doing fine. Right over there, I've got some broccoli, which is getting very close to heading up. And from the size of those leaves, it's going to be a beautiful crop. Right here, we're looking at kohlrabi, both green and purple. Now, I found a little surprise on this crop. Usually, the green members of the, the family typically grow stronger and faster because they tend to have more chlorophyll. But for some reason... The purple kohlrabi seems to be outstripping its green buddy. Down here, you can see that the bulbs are starting to form up. The stem begins to enlarge, and so what we harvest is the uh, enlarged stem. As you see, we got both green ones here and purple ones. Okay, here's one here. It's getting pretty close. Uh, it's getting close to harvest. They're about half size right now. They can be eaten at this size, but I'm going to go ahead and let them enlarge a little more so we get a, a, a harvest out of this. Yeah, so 
Kohlrabi is not the most popular and common of the cabbage vegetables. Um, I never even saw one, I guess, until I was in high school. My friend's mom in uh, Illinois, who used to raise this in her garden, it was something that they did when she came in, uh, grew up in Missouri. They had kohlrabis. And uh, she used to make it for me. I'd come by for dinner. We'd have kohlrabi sliced up, steamed with white sauce and onions in it. And it was really delicious. And I said, wow, what is this great vegetable? And she says, well, it's kohlrabi. So I started raising it in my own garden. And I have raised kohlrabi on and off ever since. Um, now, this is my first Hawaiian kohlrabi crop. And i got to admit, it's grown as well here as any place I have ever planted that vegetable. So I'm pleased with it. It's a quick vegetable. Uh, you generally can manage to bring the harvest off in right around 60 days or so. So that's, you know, two months wait to get your food on the table. The leaves are edible. The uh, bulb or the stem is edible either cooked or raw. And so it makes a great slaw. You can grate it. Uh, you chop it up in little cubes and use it like a water chestnut in a stir fry. Uh, you can put it raw in slices and chunks into salads. There are a lot of different ways this vegetable could be eaten. It tends to be rather mild in flavor compared to a lot of the other coal crops. Nice, sweet, crunchy. Um, that's a real good one. It's easy to grow and since most of the pests that eat cabbages eat leaves in general. The leaves are the most attacked part of the plant. Well, in the kohlrabi, the main crop is actually the enlarged stem, and so usually it's almost completely resistant. Um, even here with our issues with uh, rat lungworm and the semi-slug and so on, kohlrabi is a crop that generally we peel the skin. So, yeah, so right over here I have my crop of red Russian kale that we've put in recently. Cabbage really is king around here, especially in the winter time. And all those other crucifer vegetables also just do so well here. Here you'll see they're uh, planted next to my sweet onion crop. So I got sweet onions over here for the winter, rows of cabbages, broccoli, kohlrabi, marigolds to chase away nematodes. Um, annual alfalfa and perennial peanut to fix nitrogen in the rows here. So I've got living cover crops going on uh, right here in the area around the plants. It's a, like I say, annual alfalfa, perennial peanut, and marigold. The alfalfa and the peanut fix nitrogen. The marigolds look pretty, chase away the nematodes. Right in the middle of the row there is kind of out of bloom uh, crotalaria or sun hemp. Uh, that uh, is also a taller, more coarse-growing legume that I allow here. Anything that fixes nitrogen in this climate is, uh, is a winner because we lose nitrogen so fast due to the high rainfall. There we have a discussion about coal crops in general with a specific pointer at kohlrabi. Plant more kohlrabi, you'll like it. Aloha, happy gardening, hang loose.